What's going on, Kevin Robinson Jr.? You tapped in. No longer Kevin hates hip hop. We done outgrew that shit. You feel me? Your first time tapping into the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button too. Helps out the algorithm of this channel. And also hit the bell button. That'll notify you every single time I drop a brand new video. I drop videos, shit, three, four times a week. You know what I mean? So we're really trying to build this platform. If you don't know, I started out on iTunes. You know what I mean? So my podcast was in the top 15 philosophy podcasts on uh, iTunes US charts for a while. But I said, fuck it. I want to get on, the, I wanna get on uh, YouTube. You feel me? But look, this shit ain't about me. The topic today, we're going to talk about the vending business, how you get wealthy as fuck in the vending business. You know what I'm saying? And I got my <laughs> man Khalil on uh, from Atlanta. What's, What's going on, on y'all? What's, What's going on, man? I appreciate right you having me out here. This, this is Def one of the most genuine cats I've ever met in my life. I swear to God. Never met him in real life, but some of the game he's <laughs> given me has made me a lot of motherfucking money. He does not hoard the game, and we give each other game. This is a really, really intelligent cat. He's 10 years younger than me. His birthday is a day after mine in 94. 90, you know what I'm saying? So it's a trip, but... Um, yeah, so Khalil, how long you been in the vending? Oh yeah, and bro, he's got a vending. He got a couple of books out too. He's got um, you got the palette flipping book. What other books you got out, bro? Where could they tap in? I'm gonna put it at the bottom so they can tap in in the link in the description. So I got the palette flipping book. I got the vending book. I got the five fundamental business. Uh, five fundamentals of business, which teach you basically how to fully automate the business. So if you got a hustle and you want to turn it into a automated business that run itself, that book is um, about to drop within the next couple of weeks. And then I have a book on how to start a business buying and selling vending machines back when I used to do that too. And that won't be out in the next few weeks too. Then I got the vending course, the online vending course where I do the videos. I show you videos of us going and filling machines, working on machines, everything. So you know how to do everything step by step, and that's coming out too. And you can find that on gumroad.com slash hustle handbooks. Uh, Tap in. That's just going to be at the bottom. Um, you got any promo codes on anything you got out on your Gumroad? Nah, not right now. No promo codes right now, but okay. I definitely have some. Throw them in the link. You know, later I definitely have some. Right. And y'all make sure y'all follow him on his Instagram and his Twitter as well. All of that's going to be in the link in the description as well. So y'all follow. Like I said, this cat is 26. I think I've known you since you were 22? 23? Um, Might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have been 22, were, 23. You were on the iTunes podcast uh, four years ago, 2017, right? Or 2018. Dang. It's been that long, bro. I've known you about years. four. I've known you about four years, bro. Because you dang. was blowing my That's mind with some of the shit you knew at twenty two. I was like, damn, this nigga gonna be wealthy as fuck. Like, you know what I mean? And it's <laughs> and it's the it's the energy. Like you have a good energy. Your vibration is high. So that's why, then good things are coming to you. You you exude a good energy. You know what I'm saying? I talk about that a lot in previous podcasts or previous videos on YouTube, how yeah, that abundance mindset of just having that good high energy, it makes a world of difference. You can't gain anything of value, any wealth or health or anything without exuding that high vibration. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's something you do. You know what I'm saying? You might not realize it, but you're extremely positive, bro, for the most part. You know what I mean? I know you probably have bad days. I, I believe that too. Energy is really important because I know people that tell me like, oh, you know, we really rock with you and everything because the energy you give off or the way you treat people and everything. And at this point, people bring me like it's hard for me to take a loss now because people bring me opportunities. I take a loss and people like, hey, we saw you took this loss here. We'll help you out. Da, 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 da. Keep putting right. out the good energy. Keep us out like yeah, the energy is important for real. Oh, yeah. definitely. And I, I could say I could definitely attest to that, too, man. Like, 
the reason why I've been able to, um, I talk about it, I bounced back a couple of years ago. I had my first legit business working in the rap industry and shit with the PR shit. And then I fell on my ass and then um, I had to rebuild myself. You know what I'm saying? And I found real estate wholesaling and shit. And, you know, that was around the same time. I mean, you got cool and you put me on a vending game heavy, but the shit you've been doing with your vending machine hustle, and I didn't call it hustle, but just vending is extraordinary. I told you, I showed this man a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. I remember it was around February last year. It was before everything got shut down for COVID. And he was asking me, what have you been doing to make money? And I was like, oh yeah, real estate wholesome. And I was telling you, breaking it down piece by piece. And you basically started doing vending brokering. So you've been wholesaling vending machines, right? <laughs> yeah. So I definitely got that for you. So like the way I started off, I started off filling up machines and collecting money like that. Made good money. Ended up going into selling machines. And then from selling machines, I went to real estate school. And that's when I talked to you. So you actually inspired me to go to real estate school. Cause you told me about the real estate wholesaling and I was like, I want to do this, but I don't know enough about the industry. So I went to real estate school to learn about the industry. And as soon as I graduated, COVID hit, the shutdown started like three days after I graduated. Dang. So I wasn't able to take my state exam. And since I couldn't stay take my state exam, I was like, I don't want to go back out. I, I know I can make money in vending, but I was like kind of tired of it at that point. And so I yeah. thought about the real estate wholesale and the vending and I just put it together and now we, you know, we move different. We sell contracts and things like that now. So yeah, and that's how we do. Brilliant. It's brilliant because it's literally like most cats when they think about vending, they think about I have to acquire because you guys got to look at it like this. With a vending machine, you own real estate. It's like owning property. Right. Yes, you have property in someone else's premises, but it pays you every single month. It cash flows for you, right? Of course, there's exactly. certain things like you have maintenance. Maintenance you gotta buy different things for your vending machines. Um, I would suggest for you guys that aren't familiar with my podcast, go listen to the episode that me and Khalil did on iTunes three years ago. All you gotta do is put Kevin Rock, Kevin hates hip hop in Khalil Deshaun, and it'll pop up. I think you've been on like two or three of them, but um, yeah, tap in this made my third. One. Yeah, this is your third one. But tap uh -huh. into the first one because we were talking about the fundamentals and the basics of vending. So right. the thing is with vending, a lot of people think, and it's true, like you make more money when you have more of a portfolio. So if you have 20 vending machines or 10 vending machines and they're cash flowing you on average anywhere from $400 to $600 a month, you're making anywhere from four to $6,000 a month of 10 vending machines. Now, yep. the thing is, what Khalil has been doing is Khalil has been having, a, a, and in your course, I don't want to give too much. In your course, are you breaking down the whole vending um, wholesaling thing, or is that something completely separate? Nah, that's completely separate. So, okay. because I so kind of want to go too hard into it, then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't want to go too hard into it. Old hustles, yeah. Okay. Anything. Well, I'll, I'll just say this. Made money. I'll just say this. Um, basically he's been, we, and he put me on, we've been flipping vending locations and yep. a lot of y'all might not realize vending locations make a lot like you can, in the right location, you can sell a vending machine location for two, three, four thousand dollars Real shit. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not going to go hella deep. I'm not going to go step by step. But if that's something you might be interested in, you might do wholesaling in real estate, you might do vending, tap in with Khalil. I'm pretty sure if you show him a bag, show that, make sure your money is right. You feel me? Here, show For you sure. the game. <laughs> it's, it's worth, especially if you're in Atlanta, because I got a lot of cats from Atlanta that tap into this shit. And they like, they like making money. Trust me, vending wholesale. Way easier than houses. Housing wholesale is a lot of money, but vending wholesale, man, look, you can make you two, three, four thousand dollars a day. You know what I'm saying? Doing vending wholesale. And if you scale your shit right, you might be making 20 bands a week. 
You know what I'm saying? Ease off. Ease. We gon' we gonna leave it at that. So uh, uh, <laughs> a six a six figure a month with vending wholesale is possible. Trust me, this man does that. You know what I'm saying? So he does that. He's definitely done that. And I've seen him go from literally owning vending machines um, and, you know, doing it, like you said, you feel, you're filling them and, you know, get, grabbing your money and shit to selling locations. You know what I'm saying? So that's real dope. And now you got man, your horses and shit, first, man. When I first met you, I probably had like three vending machines, mm -hmm. probably like three. So right. I was still new. Like I was still in the beginning of, even though I had been doing it for a second, I still wasn't getting it. Like we weren't even really getting it till probably like three years ago. That's right. been doing it for nine. Them first six was really learning, learning the game and everything. Like right. people think shit happened. Overnight. You really got to take that time and learn and study. And I study like every every day. It was probably so like three why, years ago. I really that's why things for you are going so well, bro. Because you, like I said, it's it's the mindset. You know, you you've had a, a you have a growth mindset. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have an abundance oh, yeah. mindset, and that shit is paramount. No matter what you want to do, if you don't have a, I don't give a fuck. Because you know, niggas would be like, oh, I want to make a hundred thousand a month. I want to make a hundred thousand this year. You can literally go from making thirty thousand a year at your job to adding another 70,000 in an investment and you making six figures a year. It's doable. Yes. What he what he teaches is doable with vending. You can do it with vending. You can do it with pallet flipping. You know what I'm saying? You can do that shit with selling smartphones. You can do that shit with real estate wholesale. There's so many avenues. Write an ebook, sell a course, uh, affiliate marketing, stock market. Option trade. There's a lot of different ways you can make six figures in your money. So whether you make 30, 40,000 a year, you might not be happy where you're at. If you change your mindset, and like I was telling Khalil, you can make six figures a year with your job, your nine to five. I've had plenty of people I've coached through real estate who had jobs where they were only making 37, five, 42, 45,000 a year. But you know, they were like, look, I want to try to make 100000 this year. I'm like, well, look, shit, if you wholesale a couple of houses, yeah, you can do that. You know what I'm saying? And I've had mm -hmm. plenty of them where they've had regular jobs. And within a year, they went from making 42 a year to making 150 You know what I'm saying? Adding that, adding the wholesale with the house on top of that. You feel me? So it can happen with vending too. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. you got to look at your job and see money. That's all it is. It's, you take that money from your job and you put that in the other shit to make you more money. You feel me? Exactly. So it's, it's all money at the end of the day. So it's money no matter how where you get it from a job, where you get it from your investments, your businesses, things like that. Only difference is if you got a business and you got like cryptos and stocks and things like that, you have freedom too. So now you have the money and you have the time. Like my day is really laxed. I get up, meditate, you know, I go hit the gym, get a good workout in, eat everything like that, shower. And it's pretty chill. Like I have free time basically the whole day. If I want to schedule some meetings and if I don't, if I just want to go do whatever I can do that. Like just right. why you got to own your own, you need that freedom. That's what it come with. Right. And I, I've people I've coached before, I tell them they're like, oh, I just want to quit my job. And it's like, nah, look, it's very important that you take your job wherever you are, 40, 30,000 a year. You get yourself to a point you got to be very serious about because a lot of people think, oh, if I just made 100,000 a year, I'll be all right. It's like 100,000 a year is not a lot of money. It's really not. Um, nah. Taxes and shit, it's not a lot of money. Especially if you got kids and a wife and kid and family and shit. You know what I'm saying? 100000 a lot. I would say that you need 100000 a year or 120 to 150 a year per person in your family. Per person. So yeah, you got two kids and a wife. Bro, you need, I'll, you need at least to be making 400000 
You know what I'm saying? Even before you even think about quitting your fucking job. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. that's important. But, you know, there's, there's really no... And then, as far as with vending, it's safer than somebody wanted to get in the vending today. How much is the average vending machine? Like, how much would it cost for somebody to get in the vending? I did, a, I did one video on it. I was real general. But when it comes to vending, this cat really knows what he's talking about. I, I got in there. I'm like, I'm, it's just a side hustle for me. For me, it ain't like, you know what I mean? Shoot. So if somebody wanted to get into vending, I say first things first, cold calling. Cold calling. Make cold calls all day long. I mean, you can. You could print out like flyers and business cards and go in and go to different businesses and say, hey, I can provide you with some vending machines. Yeah, 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 like that. Talk to them yeah. most of the way. It's cold calling, picking up that phone, calling everybody in town and saying, hey, I have vending machines I can get you. Get that set up. They say, hey, yeah, what can you offer? You go in there. They say, okay, we like that. I say go in with a contract. There's a lot of people in vending that don't work. They just work, you know, a verbal contract. So they say, okay, we can bring the machines in and there's no contract. That's like a really common thing. Or you can have a contract. I, I would say have a, have a contract with every business. Every business yeah. has a contract. You never know. You know, you might have Yeah, word of mouth. <laughs> exactly. See, you can't move everything off. Like, you can do it, but you're not secure if you're moving off of word of mouth. Like, you really have to get those contracts locked in. Once you just get a contract locked in, you can go on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, offer up. You can ride around town. We used to just ride around in any vending machine we see. We pull up and ask them, hey, you know, you, you plan on selling that vending machine? Half the time they'd be like, yeah, but we don't want it no more. They'll let you get them. You can find abandoned machines like that for two, three hundred. You can find them online for like five, six hundred, all the way up to thirty five hundred, just depending on the quality of what you're getting, things so like that. So, okay, say for instance, somebody um, is viewing this right now. Um, they cold call, they cold call a couple of businesses, they get somebody, and his course has the contracts, the cold calling scripts, everything you need. How to, everything. How, what kind of machines to get. He has all of that shit. It's all inclusive. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, what's the name of the course, bro? Uh, it actually doesn't have a name yet. I'm, okay. I'm glad you said I haven't even thought. I was just, my first thought is creating the thing, and then it goes to naming, marketing, and everything like that. No, that's right. I, I do that with my books. Like, I fucking write it, and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to name it this. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So, no. Nah, I just try to get the content. Yeah. All right, so... Say, for instance, somebody, they get a machine off Craigslist for like 500 um, and they got a, they have a, a good route or whatever. I mean, they got a good location. They got a location at a, I don't know, a auto body tire shop or whatever, or a, a warehouse. You know what I'm saying? Um, how much would it cost for somebody to fill that machine with sodas and chips and snacks and shit like that. Like how much would they need for that, that initial fill up? Okay. So even before you do that, so I say, if you're going to get into vending, I say, start with a G, start with a thousand dollars. You take that, you can go find a machine for like 500, you know, make sure you go out there and test it, make sure everything works, have them test it in front of you. So you can see everything working, like make right. them do everything in front of you. Cause people like, you can't just trust random people out here. Um, so you make sure you secure at all times. Then you're going to pay like 150 to 250 depending on who you go to, to have somebody move it. You can move a machine yourself, but they all right. weigh between 800 1,500 pounds. Right. And if you ain't got the right equipment, you're going to either hurt yourself, you might destroy the building or right. whatever. So what you want to do is pay a mover. That's about 150 to 250 and then actually filling up the thing, you can start that off with a hundred dollars. Like you don't have to That's max it out when you start. Yep, you can put a hundred dollars in, fill it like two thirds of the way, and then take the profit and fill it all the way up. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that so, over out So you basically you basically can start your like you said, you can start your um, and I know when I first got started, all I did was I went on Craigslist. I got a uh my first machine was a soda and snack machine combo. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And um I got it for like 350, bro. This old white dude, he had like over 60 machines. He was retiring and shit. And at the time, you know, I was kind of broke. I fell on my ass. So I'm like, it's my last little 2500. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to give me a machine. I paid this Mexican dude that moves machines 100 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And I filled that bitch up with $120. I went to Sam's Club. I mean, I went to uh, Costco. It got everything I needed. Um, especially if you live in a major city, a good a good thing to do is go to your go to your um, wholesale district. You know what I mean? Where they'll have you know sodas and chips wholesale. You know what I mean? Um, I know here in LA we are a big port city, so like a lot of the chips and all that I was getting, I was getting it from you know the warehouses and shit. You know what I mean? For hella cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, That's the same thing. We, you can get it by the pallet and everything. Yep. You yep. And I tell people, try to innovate. Like, I know some people out here that's really innovative. I've seen people put lottery tickets on the back of some of the snacks so they stick out. So people, oh, let me buy two or three of these so I can get the one. Yeah. I've seen, you know, I tell people, put different things in there. So, hotels i'm saying hey even if you're gonna put the snacks in there go you can go get phone chargers for a dollar and put them in there for five and ten dollars it's a lot of people lose their phone chargers in hotels and they about to go drive walk right past the machine and get go to the store to buy one ten dollars when they could just pull it right out your machine that's a nine dollar profit margin you know it's it's so many that's Uh crazy because that's actually the vending the vending machine that makes me the most amount of money is for me is the one I have in the hood at the little hood hotel. You feel me? Little uh-huh. hotel at the uh Snooty Fox, you know what I'm saying? Right there in the trap, <laughs> South Central. <laughs> and I make most of my money off um, like you said, I get because I live right downtown, so all that wholesale shit, everything you see from China and Alibaba, that shit comes here first. I go right to the distributor and I cop. You know, I'll go get like 20 or 30 uh, plugs, you know, I the little USBs and shit for a dollar a pop. I'm selling them for 450 all day. You know what I'm saying? In the machine and uh-huh. motherfuckers sell out quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get they stay by on Apple, they gone. So phone cases I learned too. From- uh-huh. Phone cases too, little cheap phone cases. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those will sell pretty easy. Like, I learned all that from a hotel. I was in there talking to the people. I took a break and was, like, talking to the management and everything. And they were showing me they had a whole drawer full of nothing but phone chargers that people just be leaving behind. And they're like, hey, people come down here and ask all the time, you got an extra phone charger? You got an extra phone charger? And I was like, well, shoot, since we in the hotels, we're going to start putting phone chargers in the machine if people ask you for them like that. Smart. They can pay for that shit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You just gotta take really? it from everywhere. Yep. And the beauty of vending too, man, is uh, a lot of y'all think, you know, oh, snacks and sodas, like, nah, you can put anything in a vending machine. They got girls that sell eyelashes and weaves and hairbrushes uh-huh. and shit. I've seen Moet, vending machines. champagne yeah. vending machines. I've seen all type of shit. Caviar vending machines in Beverly Hills. Like, you can do anything with it, bro. <laughs> caviar machine. <laughs> Beverly Hills. They're not playing, man. Caviar one. And a Moet one, too. Uh-huh. Having a vending machine is just like having a salesman. That's You just got a salesman that sell for you when you're not there. That's all that 24, is. 24-7 salesman. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly. So, hey, yeah. And I renamed my... I'd have probably called it that 24-7 sales. That's a good name, well, right? Shit, you got midnight run. Midnight run is perfect. A midnight vending. Yeah. Right? A midnight run vending. That name actually came from how I learned how to vend. So I bought my first machine 
from a guy on Craigslist and he asked me if I knew how to use it. And I was like, no, I'm going to figure it out. So he said, well, I'm not going to let you do like that. I'm going to teach you. So we got to talking and he said the same thing. I like your energy. It was shortly after he asked me if I wanted to ride with him and learn. So my right. first run, I met him on his route and we didn't finish up till like midnight and he had like 10,000. Like he just pulled 10,000 off his route for the day. And I was like, and that really made me get into. We probably went to like 50 something machines that oh, day. We shit. left the morning, came back. We finished up at like midnight, grabbed some wings, counted up. It was like $10,000 for. But man, uh, what's the name? The lemon pepper. Down here, we eating the honey hot with the lemon pepper sprinkled on them. That's how we eat. That's yeah. Like Atlanta shit, man. I ain't mad at it. Uh, <laughs> I come out there, I gotta give me some lemon. I gotta give me some lemon pepper, uh, hard, nigga, fried hard and shit. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, you can get good lemon pepper everywhere out here, man. It's like everybody's specialty out here. <laughs> it's an Ameri it's an American deli out here in Eaglewood, bro. American? Oh nah, nah. Forget the American deli. They you gotta go to the. They trash. Uh, they trash compared to the duck oh, off okay. spot. So you know this. You gotta be from the area to know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you gotta go. Yeah, we got that man. We got this spot called Chickalos. You can go get the big ass chicken sandwich. They give you the whole chicken breast. It's about that big, and that thing you can get it like the different. You can get the chicken dipped in the lemon pepper and Ooh. have that as the. God yeah. damn! See, this is why niggas work uh, out so we can eat what we want <laughs> once a week. You know what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I swear to you, you gotta eat good. Like yeah. I be in the gym all the time. I be in there every yeah. basically every day, days. But yeah, once at least once a week, I'm killing something like that. I'm smashing. Got to. For sure. Got to. Gotta reward yourself. Shit. Got to, bro. Uh -huh. That's what's up. Hey, people be thinking it's all work, but it it be a lot of play. I ain't gonna lie to you. We be having like business meetings and five star restaurants and shit like that. Like we, you know, we might do this and. Then Slide over here, and go to hang out, whatever. In between, it's not as people make it out to be. I think the internet, TV, things like that make it out to be a lot more difficult than it actually is. You just put a right. good routine together. It's pretty smooth. What um? Okay, so say for instance, somebody has uh, they got a thousand dollars to invest um on on getting a machine mm -hmm. um. I would suggest this for y'all, man. Like, there's a lot of free information on this platform, you too. Um, but me personally, I would suggest that you learn from somebody who, take a course, my nigga. Don't just go on YouTube and, you know, try to finagle some shit. Look, if you want the contracts, you want to know how to actually fill the motherfucking machines, you want to know how to, um, Cause it's it's a it's a process, my nigga. It ain't just like you open the motherfucker and you know what you're doing. Somebody got to show you how to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I would suggest that you go get my man course. And like I said, it's it's coming out probably the next. I'm putting this bitch out tomorrow, G. So you feel me? <laughs> like I, I do YouTube shit. Like I don't hold on to no videos. I'm putting shit out like like no limit records, nigga. Like I'm just dropping shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I'm putting this bitch out tomorrow. It's coming out Tuesday, August 17th. Yo, yo, so your first the uh vending uh uh course is gonna be out in the next week or two by September. Well when, when can they tap in yeah. with it? About two weeks, it'll definitely be out in September. For sure, it'll okay. be out. It'll be on gumroad.com slash hustle handbook. So you'll see it on there. Like a few of the books are up already, but mm -hmm. um Vending wise, the course and the book on how to buy and sell machines, start a whole business and buying and selling machines, all that'll be out within by September. So, okay, yeah. so this and is that, what I would suggest y'all do. Y'all go cop, go cop the vending uh ebook he got right now. You know what I'm saying? And then follow him. You can follow on Gumroad. So follow him on Gumroad and follow him on his socials, Instagram and Twitter, so you know exactly when this shit come out. And if you follow me on my socials, I'm gonna be posting this shit as soon as it come out. 
You know what I'm saying? So as soon as this course come out, I'm going to blast the shit out. Um, and I'm going to have a link. So when it drops, I'm going to have a link in the description so y'all can go cop. So if you're watching this in the future, after it drops in September or October or whatever the fuck, you can go right down the link in the description and go cop it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would suggest you get it rather than just because you need the contracts, man. You're going to need the contracts. You're going to need somebody yep. to show you how to fulfill these machines. You're going to need somebody to show you how, should I do commission or should I not do commission? You need somebody to show you how to do all that shit. You feel me? And, um, you know, uh -huh. he's got a cold calling scripts, all of that shit. You can set this up to where you want to set this up to the point to where you can automate this. You know what I'm saying? You still want to keep your your, your your eyes over the shoulder of the people you work for because niggas like to steal. That's a whole nother That's episode. True. <laughs> That's niggas, true. Motherfuckers like to rob niggas, man. You put a nigga in a position to win and they want to rob you, but it is what it is. But if you got a nine to five or you got another business like me, my primary is real estate. I got people that I hired and I got it from his system. He showed me the system and how you can hire cats for this, you can hire cats for that, and you basically just paying motherfuckers and keeping the books. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And oh, man. Go ahead, bro. I can say this. So, with all the books that I put out, because I'm going to keep putting out more and more books. So, the whole hustle handbooks, every one of those is. Uh, a different hustle that I've actually done. So it's tried and proven and I can, they're all really short. They might be five to 15 pages because they're exact blueprints of how I did it. And if you follow them step by step, you can recreate everything I've done. And then right. the one book, the five, uh, five fundamental systems of business is how you turn those, each one of those hustles into a fully automated business. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, you want to take those hand to hand so you can get the hustle, make the money, and then turn it into a full on business and scale it up. Right. So that's, that's what those are about. So you actually, you're actually learning from somebody who was actually in the business. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the, be the beauty of his course is you actually go on location, you show on the machines and all of that shit. So, right. You know, you can't, it's, it's, it's more than worth the dollar amount that he's going to be charging for it because this is something that is on demand and this will be a good gift. You know, if you maybe you not necessarily want to do vending, but hell, you might have a son or a nephew. Um, I've had plenty of people buy my, um, buy my wholesaling course. Hey, uh, you know, my son, he finna get out. He did 10 years, he used to hustle. Look, man, I talk about this all the time. We just in the hood, we taught how to sell the wrong product. If you can sell pints, pills, bricks, you can sell a house, you can sell vending machines, nigga, you can sell anything. You know what I'm saying? So this might be a good product for somebody who just got out in your family. You know what I'm saying? Show them a new way. Like, man, look, if I call that going to jail shit for three, four hundred dollars, my nigga, you can make four hundred dollars a month per machine. You know what I'm saying? I got a location right now. I got a trade school. I got four machines in that motherfucker. I make $800 a week per machine, my nigga. You feel me? Remember that trade Good. school I was telling you about a couple of months ago? Yeah. Sales out. We got to refill it twice a week. That's good money. That's right. great money. <laughs> right. Legal. Legal, bro. And it's the shit. And it's the thing. It's the things you don't, the things that you think don't make a lot of money that do. You know what I'm saying? I got my, you know, yeah. I'm gonna have a couple of different business owners on here. Like, I'm gonna have my man for Barber on here. He's gonna talk about how he get his paper. But I definitely wanted to get Khalil on here because, you know, six figures a year, seven figures a year is possible too, but you gotta implement other shit. Six figures a year in vending, it's not hard to do. Not hard to do. Nah. And it's like I was saying earlier, like how you say, you have to fill them machines up twice a week. All together, you know, you're pulling that much out of the machine. That's only a couple hours a week, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. Like, you can run a whole vending business and you can have 20 locations and maybe work four to eight hours out of the whole week and you're making six figures. You know, you, you have know what I did? your whole. 
I hired, um, I ended up hiring this college kid, man, from uh, USC. And I'm paying him under the table. And he's filling all my machines for me. And I cash him uh -huh. out every, every Friday. Cash out. Bam. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, love me. He, he making more money. That's and, easy money. And he learning from me. So what I'm going to do is, I told him, I said, look, you learning the business. I said, why you in college, bro? Why don't you take some of your money and, um, you know, when I come across a machine or I got a machine I want to flip, I'll sell it to you with the location. You buy a location from me. And he in the game. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's uh -huh. how you do it, man. Each one teach one, man. You feel me? And, and that's, this is all black on. All Everybody I hire is uh -huh. black on. Just like Khalil. We talked about this. Nepotism Noir. That was on my one of my videos when I first started his YouTube channel. I wanted to make yep. it a point for black business owners to hire your own. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong with hiring white people and Asian people, whoever's qualified. Ain't nothing wrong with that shit. But the reason why other races are so much further in business and economics is because group economics is number one for them. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, the cold callers that I've hired, based upon what Khalil told me, all black. You know what I'm saying? So we keep oh. this shit black, black owned, black employed, all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't to say if you a white boy, you wanna you wanna learn the game for the right price, I'll teach you. Khalil teach you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But uh -huh. we, we try to hire our own first. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, we ain't excluding them. We just giving the privilege to our people, you know. Just like, and just, which, like just like they do with they their, do theirs. Yeah, if the Asian guy say he only want to hire Asian people, I ain't mad at him. If Mexican yeah. guy say he only mad at him. You know yeah, that's their thing. That's what they spoke. That's what we spoke. When you to control, do. when you control your economy, you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you know, and this is too. This that's is something else too. I actually, you know what? I'm just gonna tie this into it because I was actually gonna do a video on this, but um, a lot of y'all that are dealing with, and I'm not. I don't get into politics and shit. But a lot of y'all that are dealing with the whole vaccine shit, whether you get it or not, a lot of y'all getting pressure to get it. You know what I'm saying? And you like, damn, shall I leave my job or not? Take this opportunity to get in the vending machine business. You know what I'm saying? Take this opportunity to get into that. You can't, you can't bitch and whine about a job if you ain't the boss. If you don't, if your name ain't on the building, you can't say shit. You just getting paid. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So if the boss says, hey, everybody got to wear pink every day, you got to wear pink every day. You know what I'm saying? So to thwart out a lot of the bullshit with the vaccines and all that, it might federally mandate that shit at some point. But the people that aren't going to be affected right away are people like me and him who own and control our own economy. You feel me? Exactly. So... But yeah, man, you got anything else you want to add, bro? I don't want to hold you, bro. We've been going for like an hour and shit. Dang, it's been... Man, we just be talking. Sometimes we just be talking. I don't know how long it is. Right. <laughs> right. Talking for a good minute. But um, going back to what you said earlier about the, the guy that you hired, that made me think. So like, even some of the people that came up under me and some of my old customers, they're now my associates. So now they bring me deals and say, hey, you know, hey, we got this deal. You want to work on this deal together? Things like that. So right. some people that came up under me and now they have their own business. They do the same thing I do. And we share deals or we, you know, if I could toss them something, they could toss me something and we work something out. Like and that's, that. the beauty, so, and that's the beauty of, of nepotism. Like you want people that you hire to learn the business. And this is my thing. I only hire people that are interested in a business that, I'm, that I have. So if I hire somebody in vending, nine times out of 10, I'm hiring somebody who's interested to learn the business so that they can soak up the game from me or with real estate, soak up the game from me and go get better than me. You're supposed to get better than me. You're supposed to get better than your mentors. You, if you got uh -huh. a mentor that don't want you to get better than them, they a piece of shit. They're not the right mentor for you. You're supposed to take the game that you get from me or the next motherfucker and run 17,000 miles. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly. one thing every mentor I've ever had always told me, nigga, get better than me. 
You know what I'm saying? Get better than me. Soak up this game, you're gonna get better than me. But there's no greater feeling than that than someone that was an old mentor or an old intern or whatever worked for you, and now they hit you up. Man, I made 15000 this month, bro. I made 20000 this month. I made, man, my first wholesale deal, dog, I made 30000 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm about. I want you to hit me like, yo, bro, if it wasn't for you giving me the game, I wouldn't have been, I'd still be working at this bullshit job. But you gave me the game, and now I have some financial freedom. That's what it's all about. Man, that make you feel so good, black people hitting you saying, hey, man, you yep. know, you do this, and I got me some machines or whatever. And I was able to feed my family or I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent. You showed me how to do this and I pay my bills and things like that. That make you right. feel good to know, like, really were an influence in people's lives. Like, yep. not just you know what you're saying is the truth. Like, you're not right. just talking for your help. You're really giving good game. I had a cat, a perfect example. I had this cat who's, who just turned 21. He bought my course when he was 20. And uh, he was working a little bullshit, dead end job. You there, Kalu? Yeah, you there. Yeah, yeah, I'm selling me my battery was uh, low. Oh, okay. Yeah, we finna wrap up in a minute. But he was telling me how he had a little bullshit job. He got the course I'm on like back in, I think January. And it took him all the way up until uh, the last couple of weeks to get, a, get his first wholesale deal. Cause sometimes it takes that long. It could take seven, eight, nine months. But he made right. thirty three thousand five hundred dollars on his first deal. Uh, no, it's twenty. That's a whole step. Yeah, and he was able to pay off his mom's mortgage. She owed like five k, and he's able to quit his job. And that's what I'm here for, bro. Like I want to hear, yo, if it wasn't for what you did, you teaching me this, I wouldn't know how to. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have been. I would still be working this bullshit job. You know. Right. Uh, controlling your economy. That's what it's all about. You know, that's the central theme of this YouTube channel. Can learn how to control your economy. Because until you as can, me. until you can control your economy, you're going to be bitching and whining about somebody else's job working on nature. Because uh, you have no, as so I was told, like, if you're not working on your dream, you're working on somebody else's. You have no control over you. They tell somebody else, tell you when to get up. Where to be, what you're going to do for this amount of time, how much we're going to give you, things like that. I, I couldn't stand it, man. I worked in right. warehouses for years. I quit so many of them. I probably worked in like 50 different warehouses around here. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. I was in and out them things. But I was always working on vending and business. But see, that's the thing, though. No, like, you were working those jobs and you weren't being reactive. You weren't just like, oh, I hate this job. Let me go blow this money at the strip club and then I'm broke as fuck by Monday. You was like, nah, let me soak up some game so that while I'm here, I'm soaking up game to make some money somewhere else. So you was taking their money and flipping uh -huh. that into your businesses like you supposed to do, you know? Oh, for sure. Hey, last job I had, man, I only had, I had to be there nine to five basically on call, but we only had deliveries like twice a week. So I used to sit around on my laptop I'd be making cold calls and running the business, you know, collecting the money from the job. I'm working overtimes. I'm working 12 hour shifts, six days a week. I'm working nights. I'm running like that. Just putting that extra money in the businesses, man, trying to figure it out. Legit. Couldn't do it. Couldn't stay at no job. That was not for me. I knew that much. Nah, I, bro. I haven't had a job since I was 20, bro. I don't even, and that was only for like three weeks, my nigga. I was like, <laughs> I'm making my. I'm type nigga, bro. You can't tell me I'm only gonna make X amount of dollars because I'm like, well, fuck. I'm only gonna make 150, 120, or however much today. That's the case. Shit. Let me figure out how I can make that on my own. You know? Exactly. This right here, this is an ATM. This is an ATM. This is a university and an ATM. You feel me? Whoever you tapped into, you ain't gotta necessarily. You might not be able to afford to hire a mentor. You can create a virtual mentor through YouTube, podcasts, reading books and shit. But apply this shit, you know what I'm saying? And then turn this motherfucker into an ATM. Too many of y'all use this shit as a goddamn uh, TV, television. 
Fuck that. Sending dumbass memes all day and all that. That shit's cool every now and then. Turn this motherfucker into an ATM, man. Why you sitting there at that job? Because a lot of y'all sitting at your job right now, like, bullshit. Yo, after you done with this, uh -huh. give my man course, learn how to option trade, learn how to make you some money, especially in good. Especially in good. And that's real. When I was working a job, I was driving forklifts. That's what I did most of the time. I was in the warehouse. I'm listening to your podcast while I'm working. I'm riding around with my headphones in, listening to your podcast, listening on podcasts on how to make money, how to start businesses, things like that. Trying to come up in the game. I can Let say now, like... How. You came up in the game. You come right. up in the game. And, and, and had, you not, off. Had, you not, had you not said, you know what... Uh, cause a lot of, a lot of people do that. They'll just listen and like, Oh, I want to do better. I want to do better. But had you not took that step and like took the risk, like, look, I'm going to try this and look, I'm just going to get my, I'm going to take this thousand dollars to get my first vending machine. You wouldn't have never known. You wouldn't have never exactly. known. You never know till you try. Right. I mean, right. what is a, I mean, what is a loss? What were you going to do with that money anyway? Do some regular shit and you yeah, just got to decide code, um, that's the be regular or short. It don't matter how much you make, bro. A lot of niggas, and this is true, a lot of people that make the least amount of money trick off the most. So if you took that one month where you didn't go to the club, you didn't buy sneakers, you didn't buy fucking weaves and all that crazy shit, you just did one month. You just like, look, I'm gonna stay at the crib. I'm gonna soak up some game. You take that money, go get your first vending machine. Um, or you throw that money into option trading or you, you know, do what you got to do. Look, man, sacrifice. That's very important. You got to sacrifice the escapism so that at least for six months, so that after six months of, of hard work and due diligence, you're going to be, you're going to feel a whole lot better. You know what I'm saying? Imagine one vendor machine can average, like I said, four to 600 a month. And that's just in a cool location, right? Right. A lot of times you give the owner a little commission, 10%. All right, 60 bucks, 40 bucks, not a big deal, right? So imagine after six months, if every month you bought a new vending machine. So after six months, you got six vending machines. So your rent is 1500 a month. That shit pay for your rent. You might got child support to pay for that shit, pay your car note, and you still got a job at the same time. So every good. Day. You straight. Uh -huh. After a year, you got 12 machines. You know what I'm saying? You straight. And they add up. It just, they add up exponentially like that. Yep. And like you say, people just, you know, a lot of people out here bullshitting on their phone. Man, I say my your phone, my phone is probably the most valuable asset I have. Every book I have, I wrote on my phone. My yep. entire business, I run it from my phone or my iPad. I, even with the course, I recorded it on my iPad. The second business I started, my wholesale truck tire business, I run that from uh, my phone, too. Everything is run that's, from my phone. That's some whole other shit we're going to have to tap in later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's talking about that. Now, we talking about, we talking about wholesaling. Uh, we talking about three, four thousand dollars a day type of shit. Like, that's some other shit. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about that yeah. later. That's, that's, another, that's another episode. That's a couple of, <laughs> you know, y'all, and that's going to cost you. Like to learn that game, that's gonna cost you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that might be a course, but that was gonna be a price. Hey, this is some too. real shit, man. Yo, quit being so quick when you see somebody black that's an entrepreneur to hit them with this. Let me pick your brain, shit. All right, you'll oh pay the white. You'll pay the white motherfucker. What's his consultant fee? No problem. But when you see somebody that look like you, you want to get something for free. Fuck all that shit, my nigga. And if you can't afford the entrepreneur, like, yo, look, man, I'm a video guy, but, um, you know, I know you do YouTube or this and this and that, or, hey, you know, I work, I do graphic design. I think I can help you tighten up your book cover or whatever. Um, if I help you with your graphic design, I help you with your social media. Be, be a service. We can barter. Exactly. You know. We can barter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You. If, you, if you bring me a service, like you say, look, look, I, I do a website. I need a new website. You know what I'm saying? You hit me like, yo, I, I do your website for you if you show me how to do real estate. Shit. All right. We can do it. But don't hit me with this or don't hit Khalil or the next black person with this. Oh, can I buy you coffee so I can, you can give me a million dollars worth of games <laughs> for it. 
fuck that. But you, the <laughs> white boy, you give him a thousand dollars just to sit down for an hour. You know what I'm saying? We gotta break yeah, that man. shit, man. We gotta break that. Anyways, bro. Yeah. Um, where can they follow you on um social and everything? Hey, uh, you can find me on Twitter or IG at Khalil Deshaun. It's K H A L I L D E S H U N. Um, if I pop up on anything else, it's gonna be under that name too. So you can look out for me. You can go to midnightrunvending.com if you want to see us. You can check out nationaltiresupplier.com if you need some truck tires. Um, other than that, oh, gumroad.com slash hustle handbooks. That's for our hustle handbooks. And uh, we actually got a few more products coming out soon. Um, hopefully, I can plug those in later. Okay. Follow me on social. You're definitely up. So, so I keep all that. Everything that he named off is going to be in the link in the description. So all you got to do is click down below. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Make sure you follow him on the social. Go get all his products. You know what I'm saying? We add a lot of value. We add a lot of value. And I soak up a lot of game. This cat is 10 years younger than me, but he gives me a lot of game on shit that I wouldn't even think about. You know what I'm saying? A very, <laughs> a very smart young dude. Very smart. This is one of the smart. I'm telling you, straight up. He's one of the smartest cats that I know of. You know what I mean? He's not about more. Yeah, I appreciate it. Real shit. We talk about high vibration and high energy. He's not about he's not about hoarding the game at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, for, that's how you get to that higher level. I tell people, if I got here and you down here, I want you, I don't want you to hold you down here. I want you to get up here so we can both worry about what's up there. You know, so right. we can both get to that high level. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm and it, and it's very important, man, like, like, like I said, that you got your five closest people. Like Jim Rohn said, you're an average of the five closest people to you. So you want to make sure that the like five that. people that you have around you that are the closest to you are people that elevate you. It might, and it might be simple shit. It might not even be nothing crazy. It might be like, it might not even be business. It might be like, yo, this homeboy right here, this nigga is in hella good shape. He always in the gym. He always pushes me to stay in the gym. This cat, this my homegirl over here, she's an incredible, um, she's very spiritual. She's always got these ill-ass books or, you know, things that keep me on a high vibration. So I fuck with her for that. My homeboy over here, he pushes me to go in this direction with my professional life. That's all it's about. Everything mm -hmm. ain't about monetary gain, but you want to make sure the five people around you make you better. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, Khalil, man, I appreciate you for coming on, man. But, um, look, you know, with you, definitely. All of y'all hit the subscribe button, like, share, comment, and, uh, you know, I appreciate every single one of y'all.